Hi, I'm Jude Madelich Hall. Welcome. This is Titles, Talk, and Tipples. My guest today is Daniel Monroe, the creator of Captain Wallace Cyber Pirate Adventures and Dragon Brush Arts, as well as children's books Dennis the Wild Bull, Little Monster's Guide, and Deontay the Future World Champ. Welcome, Daniel. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff tonight, um, things that you are creative in, as well as hobbies, if we have time. <laughs> <laughs> Usually we, we, we often run out of time. Um, there is no set time, however, but, um, but I do try to keep it to an hour, although um, I've been known to go two, even two and a half hours. <laughs> one, one time went two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm, 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 I'm like that as well. I, you know, of course, being an artist, we, uh, uh, aside from sharing our artwork and sharing what we do, we also like to hear ourselves speak. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have found, I think it's not necessarily an egotistical thing i think oftentimes when we start talking we're like figuring things out out loud right <laughs> so it's that's exactly seem, right it just tends to seem like we like to talk about <laughs> our shows but really we have no idea what we're talking about we are figuring things out out loud <laughs> that's right that is absolutely right you know and 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 the thing is is i think that we're so passionate a lot of times about what we do and uh you know as you said it's not it, to the average person, I guess, to the normal person, air quotes, normal person, you know, and when I talk about that, I talk about people that, you know, don't share in the creative processes uh, the same as, as we do. Um, it, you know, it, it may look like we're being egotistical when we're talking a lot about our projects and about what we do and, and, you know, which all of that comes around to us talking about ourselves as well. Uh, because when we're talking about our projects, we are talking about ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. So, you know, but I think that it's just, it's a passion thing and it's, it's not, we're not meaning to talk about ourselves as much as we are about what we're doing. Right. <laughs> So, so we get to talk a lot tonight, but at the same time, we're going to be tickling. And so um, that's part of the show. <laughs> what, um, what are we tippling on tonight? Well, an old fashioned. This is, uh, this is actually my second one of the evening. Okay. <laughs> Already, I'm on number two. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, right. Okay, so. well, let's cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. indeed uh so what would you like to start out with you do a lot um you're uh an artist uh painter drawer um illustrator and um and you're an actor and a producer right or you've been a producer right i you know what i i, I do it all i wear many 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 different hats <laughs> i mean you know i've been um you know a, an artist my entire life i you know as i told you before i was i was a soldier for a while because i did you know my my duty and 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 joined the military at a young age um travel the world doing that uh, when I got out, I started selling my paintings in art galleries uh, across America and, and uh, uh, got married, started raising a family. And then I got into um, illustration work. Yeah. So and that's, that's how I found you was um, on Facebook as an illustrator coming right. across. Um, yeah, I can't even remember now, but coming across your name, I think uh, I saw illustrations, started looking it up and was like, cool. Yeah. Right. So, right. <laughs> uh, what was your first um, children's book? The first children's book. Oh gosh. Well, you know what? There, there's several. First, because you, you you're going back so far in time, really. Uh, that you know, I, I have some projects out there. I've actually forgotten over the years. Oh, sure. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> but the, but really, but the most current uh uh first would probably be the uh 
a little monster's guide uh, okay. to scaring children, how to scare children. And uh, I know that when we're out and about and when I'm promoting, you know, these books and, and I still promote this book as well, when I'm out comic cons and things like that. And uh, people are like, oh my gosh, you know, they got their child there and, and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, a monster's guide on how to scare children. That's so scary. And I'm like, okay, it's tongue in cheek. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's soft scare. It's, it's, it's written for four, for, you know, the four to seven year old, uh, age range mm -hmm. so it's very soft it's very you know the the monsters are very uh cute and funny looking you know mm -hmm. uh and and children absolutely love the book so That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and and what is your recent most recent story the most recent one is uh, little eddie goes to the carnegie hall little eddie oh goes to carnegie gosh. hall that's really it, cool i'm a violinist so carnegie hall means oh wonderful to me. i've never wonderful. been to, i've never been to carnegie hall but i had the chance to play with a pianist that um had played carnegie hall three times so oh that's wonderful <laughs> yeah that's wonderful yeah this story this story is about a uh, a mother wrote it about her son and her, her son has those aspirations right now. He's making a fairly big splash in our local area uh, as, okay. as a pianist. And uh, uh, he's in his twenties. He's very young and everything. And, and I think that he's probably going to wind up going in that direction, hopefully. So, and it, you know, and it was a book about when he did make, take a trip to Carnegie hall as a child. So mm -hmm. it, it's kind of, uh, one of those books of the child is at Carnegie Hall and he's envisioning himself someday yeah. playing there as an adult. And uh, it's, it's a very uh, cute and inspirational book, I think. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what about, I'm, I'm curious about, um, I was checking out a few of your children's books. So what is Dennis the Wild Bull about? Dennis Besides... The Besides Dennis the Wild Bull. <laughs> mm, right, right, right. Well, Dennis the Wild Bull is interesting because it was written, uh, co-written anyway, by uh, Dennis Rodman. Uh, oh, the, cool. Yeah, yep. Oh, the, uh, right. Okay, now it's all, okay. It, 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 right. It. <laughs> Once you know the name and everything, then it kind of clicks, right? Yeah. And uh, so it was it was written by him for his children. Yeah, there there was another writer that did help him and everything too. Um, so there's a co-writing uh, situation going on there. But it, that book is really about being different, how you can be different and uh, it's okay to be different. Sure. So, and of course, you know, we all know <laughs> Dennis Rodman is different. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he, when he came out, it, um, you know, with his hair and his tattoos and, and all that, that was just, it was a super cool part of, of many of our lives, you know, because we weren't seeing that in sports. We weren't seeing that often, even in actors and stuff. So, right. so to me that he's pretty much an icon that broke a lot of barriers open the doors to a lot of people you know he absolutely <laughs> did people. yeah it's absolutely right and you know what the, the thing is is when we're while we were promoting that book i got to spend a, a day with him in in chicago uh at a bookstore and and we were autographing books uh for the debut and uh, he is uh very a lot of people ask me all the time you know they're like you know well how how is he what kind of a person is he you know how was it to to spend some time with him. And, and, you know, I, I'll tell you, uh, he's very, very, very gracious with his, uh, fan base. I mean, oh, they nice. come up to him and, and of course, you know, there, there's this adoration on, on their part, yeah. you know, uh, when they come up to talk to him and, and, and everything. And he just talks to them like a normal person, you know, like yeah. they're a normal person. He's a normal person. There's no big deal about it. I mean, he's right. very, very gracious. And I know that, they had a rule there that they didn't want people bringing in their sports memorabilia for him to sign because mm -hmm. we were there to sign books, sure. right? <laughs> but, you know, people would, of course, sneak things in under their shirts. Sure. And, everything. Yeah, <laughs> of that's right. and and so there were times where his manager would step in and say, no, no, you know, we're, we're not signing that for you. And, and Dennis is like, give me the basketball. Yeah, give it to me. Yeah. I'll just sign it. You know, <laughs> so he, you know, he, he's very gracious with his his fan base. I I thought he was a he was a pretty cool cat. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
And so you wrote, uh, um, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to really look at it, but I'm guessing it's a, a sports centered book. De- Deontay, the future cha- world champ. Deontay, the future world champ. Now, what that book is, that was written by uh, 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 a guy named Deontay Wilder. And he actually went on to become uh, the world heavyweight champion boxer oh, wow. of the world. So, and, and that book, uh, of course, is, again, there's a cool writing, you know, uh, atmosphere with this one as well. Um, but it's uh, uh, about him as a child and his aspirations where he wanted to someday become uh, this, this huge athlete. And so it's a story about, you know, how his friends were always like, oh, Deontay, come do this, come do this with us, or, mm-hmm. you know, let's play here, let's do this. And he's, he's focused on wanting to, you know, run and wanting to, you know, lift weights and everything when he was a kid, uh, jump rope or whatever, uh, to get his body in shape so that someday he can become uh, what he ultimately did become, the, the heavyweight champion of the world, so... That's, uh, again, a very, you know, positive book. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, of course, yeah, all the books that I, that I illustrate, they all have uh, representations of, of everybody mm-hmm. in yeah. the books. So I, if you looked at the artwork and everything, you'll see that there's not just one gender or one, sure. uh, yeah. you know, uh, culture that's represented. Everybody is in there. So. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're always very, um, I don't want to say careful, but I'm very mindful about wanting to make sure that everybody has that representation. Yeah. And, you know, that's such a big thing right now. And um, I mean, it probably shouldn't be, but it, you know, because it should have been this whole time, but right. I think it's such a wonderful time of, re- you know, people being represented. It's so important. And, the more we see it, the more we realize how important it is. Right. You know? And um, on your website, I saw, um, yeah, you've done stories about um, uh, African-Americans. You've done stories about uh, Mexican-Americans. Um, just, I, I love seeing all the diversity and, and it's really great. So, so what are some of the other um stories that you'd like to talk about your well you know stories. we have right and and you're talking about some of the uh, mexican-american uh heritage there we have uh, uh a book called uh jesse and the kukui uh which the kukui is uh the mexican boogeyman yeah uh, basically <laughs> and uh you know and the, with the first th- this is like the second edition of the book because the first time it came out uh, uh, Jesse James Leha, which is, I, I seem to work with a lot of, uh, high profile, uh, uh, athletes. Mm-hmm. So uh, Jesse James Leha was a, uh, I think he's a, uh, welterweight champion, uh, another boxer, uh, mm-hmm. and he's in the hall of fame, I believe. But, uh, um, so he wrote this, this story about when he was a child, <laughs> <laughs> and how he was being naughty or whatever. And his parents would tell him, you know, you oh, have to be good or the Kukui is, <laughs> right, the Kukui is coming to get you. Right. <laughs> so I, in the, in the first iteration of the book, um, they, the, him and the writer, they, they changed the name of the Kukui just said, Jesse and the boogeyman, Jesse, mm, you know, and yeah. the boogeyman. And, and I never liked that. And I'm like, uh, you know, I said, I, I don't like that at all. I said, if it, because we came back and redid the book years later. Okay. And I said, you know, I said in the second iteration, I said, just Jesse, just let's just use the word Kukoi. Sure, you know? And he's yeah. like, well, you know, a lot of Mer- a lot of American, you know, white America doesn't right. know what that word is. Oh, well, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. That's I said, my... so what? Yeah, right. That's yeah. what I said. I said, that, so what? Is that your audience? Is that, who you, it, you know, you're not representing those people. It, exactly right. Yeah. And I told him too, I said, you know, I said, so what? I said, you know, that, that does another thing. It creates a talking point, right? Mm-hmm. So that you can tell people, well, the Kukui is, you know, the Mexican version of what you would call the boogeyman or bad spirit or whatever, sure. you know? So, yeah. and so that's why we were able to rename the book uh, appropriately, I, I believe, uh, Jesse and the Kukui. So. That's great. (laughs) (laughs) 
So and a, yeah. and a lot of it has, well, yeah, your, your children's books sound very inspiring and aspiring to represent lots of different people. Um, so now besides your children's book, you do um, other art and your, uh, your site is called Dra- Dragon Brush Arts. Dragonbrushart.com. Now, here's the thing is when uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, why Dragon Brush Art? And the reason is when I, when I was in the Army years ago, um, I, I was stationed in Hawaii. And so while I was there, um, the military, a lot of people don't know uh, what, what the military really is when you go to your permanent, what we call a permanent party station, when you go to your home. Uh, in the military, you go through your training phases and then you go to your permanent party station. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. And when you get to your permanent party station, it's really like a nine to five job, really. Sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, you, there, there are times where you have to go out in the field for weeks or months at a time and retrain and learn new things. Um, but for the most part, it's like a nine to five job. So, um, sometimes you get weekends off and take, you know, your time's off, you, you sure. get it. So a lot of times when I was off on the weekends, of course, I've always been an artist my entire mm-hmm. life. Right. Since um, you were nine years old, right? <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Right. You know, I started, I, you know, some of my earliest recollections is sitting at the dining room table, drawing with crayons and everything, mm-hmm. you know, three, three years old or whatever, you know? Sure. And uh, yeah. And like you said, when I was about nine years old, I started actually, selling portrait work professionally uh you know so <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah yeah you know um pastel portraits is mm-hmm. is what my specialty was uh, at the time um so then when i went in the army and when i got to hawaii um i realized that there were airbrush stations downtown downtown honolulu and on the corners, there would be people standing there with airbrushes and they would be making T-shirts and selling them and everything. And uh, so I was like, you know, I, I would love to do that. <laughs> so I bought an airbrush apparatus, which back then was very expensive. Sure. I mean, it was like a $1,500 deal, Good. you know, really, uh, because the airbrushes were almost like 500 bucks a piece just, just, for, the air, just for the brush, you know, which <laughs> now you can get for like, you know nickel and dime right sure. but back then they were like 500 bucks you know just for the brush and and uh, 100 bucks for the hose and you know 800 bucks for the compressor it was just oh, so yeah so uh so i bought it all didn't know how to use it at all <laughs> <laughs> you know, so somebody yeah somebody asked me they were like dan do you know how to do you know how to use that at all i'm like nah but i'll figure it out right <laughs> So I did, but uh, I wound up working at a at a t shirt shop down in uh, downtown Honolulu uh, on the weekends. And uh, what we were doing a lot then was, uh, and that's where I learned how to use the airbrush. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned in front of people while I was uh, messing up their t shirts that I was trying <laughs> to paint. But but uh, but I finally I finally got it got the kick of it, and uh, we were doing a lot of dragons at the time okay. so that's how i got the name dragon brush because mm-hmm. i was painting a lot of dragons with an airbrush basically oh, so okay. <laughs> oh that's great and ha- when what uh when was that what year uh that would have been 1985 okay 1985 86 87 is wow. when I was there. So, yep. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, my my husband's in the Army Corps of Engineers and he's in Hawaii right now. So Nice. Yeah, nice. They're, they're, they had to dry dock there because their their dry dock here in um we're in Astoria, Oregon, but he um his home base is Portland, Oregon. And okay. uh their uh dry dock burned down. So <laughs> Oh. So this let, yeah, so he had they had to dry dock in Hawaii. Was there with those fires out there? Were there No, this was this was separate from the wildfire. Oh. Well, wildfires, oh, okay. some of those were human started, but um but yeah, it was completely separate. I I have not heard anything of it um too much. They I, it's believed that it was an accident. So Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. <laughs> something, something caught on fire inside a building, and 
and ended up building burning down the building so they oh my god yeah so wow. instead of being two hours away he's all, all the way over in hawaii yeah he's 10 <laughs> hours away now yeah wow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh but anyway um <laughs> so now you have another persona that is um kind of opposite of all this other stuff a pirate called captain wallace I, I be a pirate lass. <laughs> there would be right Captain on. Wallace there, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Captain Wallace is a good old friend of mine. I mean, you know, I've been working with him for, gosh, I think it was 2000, 2002 or two. Yeah, it was about 2002 okay. when I started working as Captain Wallace. And, wow. and one day, what, it, what happened? Well, Back in those days, um, I found a site on the internet called Live TV. Mm -hmm. Live TV. <laughs> and it was great because they would let people come on and, and create content. Oh, and nice. you could have your own channel and, and you could create videos. It, it, was, it was like YouTube, but better because sure. on, on live video, you, you could put your, uh, your playlist up. And it would just keep playing. It would actually oh, okay. just play and it would loop. And, and people, when the people would come to your channel, it, it think something was already playing. So, sure. you know, they didn't have to click, you know, sure. to play. Yeah. They could just sit there and watch it. And it was actually TV. And actually my show was, was showing next to uh, robot chicken uh, stuff. That's where robot chicken started. Are you right? kidding me? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my stuff was, my Captain Wallace stuff was actually playing alongside Robot Chicken uh, uh, stuff. So uh, anyway, one day, my, <laughs> one day my wife came home. This is a funny story. My wife came home to find me uh, standing in front of a, a, a green blanket that I had tacked up <laughs> to the wall in the living room <laughs> in this horrible pirate costume. <laughs> Because it was just a costume that I hobbled together from like sure. a good, you know, uh, a thrift store and everything. And it had a horrible wig and, and just a foam pirate hat and stuff. And <laughs> she's like, well, what are you, what are you doing? You know, I had a little camera, a little digital camera sure. on, on a stand. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I, I, I be making movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm making videos on. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's where captain wallace started and um uh, um captain wallace's backstory is that he's you know from a video game and he lives on the internet and you know yeah. he can go and have adventures on the internet so anyway over the years um you know I, I i had a lot of fun with him and everything and and i did put him away for several years while i was working on books and and doing these other things and a friend of mine came over a few years ago and we were talking about it. And I was showing him some of the old videos that you can still find on YouTube. And uh, he's like, Dan, he said, you know, that, that stuff is just really funny. So you need to bring that guy back and everything. Like, you know, I, I can bring him back and start having fun with him again, you know, because he was a fun character. It was fun to do those oh, videos. Yeah. So, you know, lo and behold, when I brought the guy back and I, I actually put actual money into him this time, you know, <laughs> not, not just a $50, you know, cursory sure. spending some on, on a cursory costume. Um, but, uh, but I actually, you know, got a good wig and a nice, you know, nice coat, nice, nice stuff to, to put him together. And uh, lo and behold, uh, when, when I went to the TV station, we have a local TV station where um it's a public media network uh mm -hmm. it's much like pbs and things like that sure, yeah. and uh so i went there pitched my show to them like, oh yeah dan we'd love for you to come in and do this show so um so i started doing the show in in the studio and we started bringing kids in uh and interacting with kids in the studio and everything and uh this crazy pirate he he, he went and evolved on me <laughs> you know, oh. <laughs> he, he went into an evolution. I don't know, because I was just going to have just uh, this pirate character just to have fun with and, you sure. know, be a little artsy with artistic. And, and he went through this evolution where uh, over the past two years, even um, I've actually taken the idea and I've turned him into a nonprofit charity organization. So, nice. <laughs> That's awesome. so now, yeah. So now we're Captain Wallace Artsy Adventures Incorporated. And what we do <laughs> is we take arts to uh, children that are uh, especially underprivileged uh, areas 
um, and, and when they're uh, having to have long stays in hospitals and things like that. Oh, yeah. And uh, we bring in the arts, we draw with them, show them how to draw, show them how to express themselves. Uh, and we have uh, uh, toys and tokens that we leave behind uh, with them and everything. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that we try to do, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So is is Captain Wallace still on television or yeah. is it Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's he's in our local area. He's uh the thing is with public media networks is it's c- county based. Mm-hmm. So it's in your county. Yeah. So yeah, uh we can expand <clears throat> into other areas when people want to uh, uh sponsor us in their areas so you can go to your if anybody listening you can go to your public media network in your area uh most larger towns uh sometimes they're just a it's just a thing that somebody you know operates out of their closet at home sure really yeah. you know uh the the public media network in my ex, ex, my my area my town that i live in here the town is so small that that's how it works. It's just, you know, it's just a guy in, in his home yeah. and he has it. Um, and that's fine. But the one in the one that we deal with is in a larger city. Mm-hmm. So they have government funding and they have, um, it, it's an actual TV studio. Yeah. Um, so, um, so that's who we're working with. And we get to go in the studio there and use their green room and their green screen. And, you know, and of course, if you see the show, you realize it's very, it's very animation heavy. Sure. Yeah. The background is um, computer generated. Right. It's yeah. all right. It's all animation and it's, and it's all animation work that, that, that I do as well. <laughs> oh, you do that too. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I make, <laughs> so I make all that, you know, so it's it, a lot of people don't realize that when the, when the puppets come up, cause I, I, I sculpt the 3d puppets and everything. Mm -hmm. So I do all that animation, that computer animation. um, And then uh, uh, the background work. Yep. I do. So I do it all. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So lost you again. I'm sure you know that. I'm yep. just gonna wait. Oh, okay. There, yep. There, it just it's just coming up saying the connection's unstable. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's all right. And um, so you're in Pawpaw, Michigan. Is that where you are? Yep, Pawpaw, Michigan. Yep. The okay. the town's so nice they named it twice. It's two paws. <laughs> A lot of times people okay. call we call it down here two paws. Okay. Because uh, it's P A W P A W. So yeah. um, yeah, it's just a just a little town in Michigan and. Uh, you know, if anybody knows Michigan, they know that uh, a lot of the towns up here are like that. They're just little, you yeah. know, little towns. You kind of blink your eyes and you, you run through it and you miss it, you know, kind <laughs> right. of thing. Um, but it, it's a nice little town. We've, we've raised our kids here, my wife and I, and, nice. and uh, we just celebrated our 32nd anniversary the other day. Wow. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, you know, we raised our kids here. It was nice and quiet. And, yeah. You know, everybody leaves everybody alone. and. <laughs> When they're not gossiping about each other. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Small town. So, yeah, yeah. so what's the population there? Population, I think, is probably about 25,000. Okay. So it's bigger than where I am. It, in, yeah. I mean, I'm it's not Astoria. tiny, but yeah. it's small. Yeah. 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 So I'm in, a, in Astoria, Oregon, which is 10,000. But I mean, during the... Uh, during uh, the summer, I mean, it's like, I think we triple or something, you know, Um, but we're very uh, uh, tourist oriented. Right. Unfortunately. (laughs) (laughs) Is is Papa Michigan touristy or? It is because we do have a lot of Chicago people that come here because we're only three hours away from Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. So actually we're less than three hours. I mean, really you can get there in a, two hours easily but um a lot of chicago people have property here uh we have lakes here in the area oh yeah um yeah so it's you know it's it's very it's very water sports in Mm -hmm. this area so yeah (laughs) well i have three jobs and two of them are out of michigan which is really funny (laughs) nice Um, i'm my publisher is in michigan 
And oh, I, okay. I actually can't remember the town he's in. Um, it's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't, I can't remember exactly, but um, white, white cat publications is out of Michigan. And then I work with Kenji Jermaine Marshall, um, who runs a television channel out of Kenji. Kal- yeah. Yeah. Out of Kalamazoo. Yeah. 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 yeah I know Kenji very well. Yeah. Very we work nice. together. Yeah. I have just started working with him. He hired me as a script writer. For, oh, nice. For a nice. show he's been trying to put together. So we're hoping to get that out of the gate pretty soon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So you're, so that'll be showing uh, on the, on the same uh, yeah. channel that my stuff is showing on. Absolutely. Yeah. It's different, a different audience for sure. This is, this is late night, like grindhouse, a campy horror stuff that we're, right. <laughs> we're going to be doing, but you know, yeah. <laughs> it's fun stuff though. It it's is. Fun oh stuff. yeah. <laughs> it totally <laughs> is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Well, it's a small world, you know. It really I mean, is. Yeah. Once you yeah. get out there and start it, meeting it, people. It really, really, really true. And, you know, of course, the internet just makes it smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh, I mean, gosh, yeah. you know, I mean, the thing is, it's just like, you know, years ago, it, 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 that's the beauty of it because years ago, right now, that like with my Captain Wallace show, Everything in it is all original stuff. Um, even even the music is all original. And here's the thing: is I have a group in Welshire, England, who does my music. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, you know, so it's cool. The internet is great because we really do literally get to work with people around mm-hmm. the world. I work with people around the world all the time, you know, and and oh, it's. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, it's just nice to be able to uh, work on that large of a scale. You know, a lot of times people in my hometown here, even they're like, well, how do you know this person? How do you know that person? Like the internet, man. That's how uh, you work yeah, with people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's you how know? I met Kenji. I mean, I met Kenji because I saw his art, his graphic novel art. And I reached out to him because I, I mean, I did, I, I just got into the, to the writing world myself just about a year ago. I mean, I wrote for four years, then got into the writing world. And um, so I've been doing it for a while, but I was not involved in the world at all until about a year ago, (laughs) the social media world and stuff. And so I was just reaching out to everybody I could get my hands on, you know, and and, um, I wanted to, my, my recent, my, my debut novel just published, uh, a month ago, um, the, Everstein, nice. the Everstein Chronicles, and nice. uh, but I wanted to put it into graphic novel form one day, and so I was reaching out to every graphic novelist I could find, and when I saw his work, I was like, "That's what I want it to look like." So that's how I ended up meeting him. Well, it's funny because like a year later, we're not doing gravel graphic novel work together. <laughs> we're doing something completely <laughs> different, you know. But um. And then, of course, with this this show, I've talked to a lot of great people. Right. And, that is the way it goes, though. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, there, there's times where I've worked with people on on things that I didn't really plan. It's just like Captain Wallace. I didn't plan for this thing to go yeah. this way. You know, what <laughs> right. I mean, I just planned to make a few videos and have some fun. Sure. And and now we're, you know, we, we just did a fundraiser where we raised money to to help a couple families have a nice Christmas in our area, yeah. you know, nicer than they would have, you know, would have had their, their, sure. their needy families. They, they mm-hmm. don't have what they should have, you know? So yeah. we're, we're helping them to um, have a much better Christmas because um, it goes back. I, and I even wrote a thing that I shared. Uh, it goes back to a time where I did, we didn't have a good Christmas with my little family, mm-hmm. you know? And, and uh, I remember, you know, I, not to go into the full story of it, but I do remember, you know, my wife made a, uh, she cut out a Christmas tree out of construction paper and we had that taped on the wall yeah. so the kids yeah. could have something to look at. And, sure. and uh, you know, I had just lost my job. We were in a new city, you know, uh, and, and it was just a mess and it was just a, a horrible Christmas. It was sad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I just, I just vowed to myself that if I were ever in a situation where I could help somebody else out, um, so that they wouldn't have to experience that, right. um, that, that I would help them out. And lo and behold, 
you know, not that, you know, I'm, I'm not a wealthy person or anything like that, but, you know, Captain Wallace does, is able to pay for some things like this. And uh, especially uh, a nonprofit uh, charity organization, um, we can, you know, ask for donations. And when people donate, it's 100% tax deductible to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, that allows us to go out and make a little bit of a difference in, in the local community. You know? yeah. So if someone wanted to donate to Captain Wallace, where could they do that? They could go to captainwallace.org. Uh, Captain Wallace is all one word. Um, uh, captainwallace.org. Even on the first page, uh, if you scroll down, um, you'll see that you can go to our PayPal, the Captain Wallace PayPal, and, uh, uh, and you can donate through there. Um, also, there is set up uh, you can donate through um, Amazon Smile. Nice. Oh yeah. Um, That's a yep. Good one. So yep. So if people sometimes I've I've noticed people don't like to give money, <clears throat> and that's fine. Um, but they can go on to Amazon Smile. We do have a shopping uh, a wish list on there oh, nice. uh, of, you know, crayons and art supplies and everything that we can donate to the kids or that we use when we're uh, uh, visiting children and show, you know, and teaching them art and everything um, and doing crafts with them. So people can uh, help us in that way as well. So oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so what are your, um, besides Captain Wallace, what are your projects now? What are you working on? <clears throat> well, you know what? It's funny because I do have, I, you know, being an artist, I always have so many different things going on. <laughs> it, 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 it really is true. I don't know if you can. I have a oh, this yeah. painting show, I'm working on. Stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this painting I'm working oh, on right that's now. Cool. Ooh. <laughs> nice. And what this is for, this is for the Captain Wallace book. Oh, um, you're doing a book. Yep. So I'm going to be doing a book cool. for Captain Wallace. And uh, well, I, my other painting is over on the other side of the wall over there. But um, but then I'm I'm doing a, a reprisal of a comic book that I did. Good oh, Lord. Yeah. Ten, yes, that's right. Yeah. You did comic books, too. I didn't yeah. write that down to remind myself. I <laughs> 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 but uh, I'm doing a reprise. I've had so many people that have been hollering at me. I did a one-off issue of of, a, of of Ye Gods, their original characters, and I did this book ten, 10 years ago. I can't believe it's been that long ago. But I've had people just hollering at me to get this book, to get the next one done. <laughs> you know, and you know how artists are. You know, oh, we, sure. we have, when people come to us and hire us to do artwork for them, then that means that our projects, our personal projects are kind of left <laughs> by the sideway a little bit right. because we have to pay our bills. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and our passion projects don't always do that for us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, so I, I've, I've left E guns by the side wave a little bit, but uh, I'm getting back into them uh, I'm, I'm redrawing them right now. I'm actually working on the next book for ye gods and I'll be doing a, probably not a Kickstarter, bro, but I'll probably be doing an Indiegogo, uh, yeah. for, for them here. And shortly, um, I have a whole comic community, uh, on Facebook that is like kicking me in the rear end. <laughs> 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 to get it done to get it going and they're telling me that they'll i i think that it'll do very well because the first time that i that i did the book um uh it, it had a lot of uh people that were very interested in it and people just loved the characters so um yeah so i think it's going to go very well i That's i great. yeah like i said i have a lot of people that are kicking me about it and they're telling me they're going to promote it and everything. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. And is that the uh, only comic you've done? No, 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 oh, oh, no. Oh yeah. Cause I, I was going to say, I thought on your, I saw on your website more than one. 
Oh yeah, I've I you know I've done a lot of comic book work. Uh, not really for the you know big three guys. I've not done any Marvel or DC stuff, but um, you know which I I don't really care to. I don't I don't really like to draw other people's characters. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I like to draw my own. Yeah, but. That's great. Uh, but uh, I also did a comic, uh, a graphic novel for uh, the Department of Defense back in, I think it was about 2012, 2013 when we did that one. And that was for the 60th anniversary of the Korean War. Oh, wow. And uh, what it is, it's, it's, a, it's a thick book. It's, it's a... Uh, about a hundred pages, I think, of different war stories. It's a graphic novel uh, wow. of different war stories from the Korean War, as told by the actual soldiers that were there. Um, so it's not just it's not just historic uh, fantasy or anything like that. It's actual real stories. And the funny thing is, is I was able to illustrate um, a story f- uh, about uh, General Blessy who was a he he was a pilot Mm -hmm. who wrote the book basically on aerial tactics on Mm -hmm. how to dogfight uh with you know with high speed uh uh jets you know so that was a fun it it was actually a fun story to illustrate because i got to draw (laughs) i got to draw jets a lot and everything nice (laughs) yeah (laughs) So that was fun. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And you know, and it was fun anyway, because, you know, of course being an old army guy myself, and of course that's part of the reason why I got hired too, is because, you know, I'm an old army guy, uh, a veteran and everything. And they wanted to have Mm -hmm. as many vets involved as possible uh, with the book. So uh, yeah, you know, so I was able to illustrate uh, three different stories in that book. And um, um. you know, it's just, yeah, just good stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so That's great. Yep. Then, of course, you know, I have Orc Girl. I have, you know, my, some of right. my own creations. I have mm-hmm. Orc Girl, who's uh, 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 a very strong female character on a world of her own, you know. Her green skin. Yeah, green skin orcs, you know. She's uh, pretty awesome, I it, must it's say. Good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna make another gesture because I'd like to put a picture of her in this. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And any <laughs> other pictures you want to send me of, of the stuff we've talked about, that would be great. Sure. So I'm, yeah. You know, I don't do a lot of editing on these, but if I can sneak stuff in. And this is something too that um if you if you want anything specific put in, um, Kenji is actually going to start airing these next year. <laughs> oh, nice. My, my podcast. So late right. night, late night television, he needs content. And so I was like, sure. Right. <laughs> but, but it makes me want to jazz these up a little bit more. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll send you, I'll send you, uh, I can do that tomorrow. I can send you okay. some a packet of stuff to nice. tomorrow. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, um, gosh, yeah. So, aside from being an illustrator, from children's books to graphic novelists, actor, producer, um, we have a little bit more time to chat about some hobbies of yours. So, one that was really interesting to me was like you used to be a psychic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was. So this yes. is this is really funny. I looked up Daniel Monroe and there is another Daniel Monroe that is a psychic sure. online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I suppose, you know, that's not that weird. But um I was like, that is not the Daniel Monroe I'm going to be talking to. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Not not the same guy. But you know what's funny though, is that if you Google Daniel when as you did. When you Google Daniel Monroe, so much stuff will come up. A lot of stuff comes up. A lot of it is mine. But then when you start looking at other people, they're like, wow, that's not the guy. That's not this yeah, guy. That's right. not this guy. Cause you'll be, you'll see an old guy who's a, who's a, he's an art professor. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and I'm sure you came across him. And then you'll see some young guy, younger than me, who is uh, uh, a guitarist. <laughs> and then you'll see, you know, you'll see 
But I know the da- funny, Daniel Monroe psychic, I believe, is female. I, I don't want to assume anything. Danielle Monroe. Sure, sure. You know, so, but it's spelled exactly like your name. Sure. So, yeah. <laughs> sure. You know, so it, it's funny because, OK, here's the thing. Daniel Monroe is not really even my real name. Oh, right? OK. <laughs> it is, but it isn't. And and, and a funny story that um, I was adopted. All right. So my actual birth name is Todd Michael Gehring. Okay. All right. So when, but when my parents adopted me at, at seven months old, of course, they changed, they legally changed my name to Daniel Monroe. That's the name they gave me. Mm-hmm. So my name is and isn't that. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Right. You know? yeah. uh, but what's funny though is even with that, even with that, strange juxtaposition of 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 the changing of the name it seems that the daniel monroes are always artistic in yeah. some way yeah you know and, I mean? that, and that was what was so weird about looking just the, your name up right without right. any other thing attached to it was like right. the amount of things that i was like oh that's definitely him and then i'd click on no that's not him that's right. definitely him oh no that's not but yeah, just things that we've already discussed um, through email and stuff. That oh, so that's right. why I asked you, what are your <laughs> websites? Because I'm finding all this other stuff that matches, but it's not you. <laughs> right, and you know what? I'm just gonna have a Daniel Monroe day and just invite everybody who's named Daniel Monroe just to come <laughs> over, sure. and have a big jamboree, and have a good time because yeah. it really does <laughs> seem like all the Dan Monroe. Well. All the day, a lot of the Dan Monroe's that I've come across online anyway, just do seem to be artistic in some way. But, you know, to get to the psychic thing. Oh, yeah. That, you know, I, I've, I've, I've been one of those people that, you know, I'm, I'm empathic anyway. I'm an empath, uh-huh. you know. And <clears throat> so. A lot of artists are. And, and most are. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I have my theory on that, on why we are, is because. I, I think that there's some of it that, that is spiritual, but I think at the other end of it, I think that we spend so much time drawing uh, people mm. oh, and yeah. we draw facial expressions over and over, we, especially, especially if we're a uh, sequential artist, sure. you know what I mean? If we're sequential, um, it, 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 then we're drawing faces over and over, but we're drawing their emotions in their faces over and over. So that way we know how to get that one crinkle in the corner of the sure. eye, or we know how to get that, that over here in the corner of the lip. We know how to turn that lip up when we're trying to get an emotion across. And I think that we do that so often that when we are watching people interact with us, that's why we can read them so well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because we know what they're thinking because we draw that all the time. Right. Right. (laughs) So, but anyway, I, I, I was a, I was a psychic on years ago. um, There was a psychic friends network. And uh, I mean, back probably what 1990s, I think it was the psychic friends network, (laughs) 1980s, 1990s. But um, I'd got out of the army and I'd, I'd come home and, and uh, started my my new little family and everything. And uh, uh, being an old soldier and an artist, uh, it was just hard to find jobs. It was high, hard mm-hmm. to find work. And uh, so I found myself, you know, calling the psychic friend network to, you know, try to just trying to reach out to somebody. Sure, really. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had a psychic want answers. You know? right, exactly. <laughs> no, that's exactly right. And uh so one night it was funny. I, I had a reading by a psychic on there and she said, you know, she stopped it. She said, you know what, Dan? She said, you could do this. And I said, what do you mean? She said, you, she said, you have the psychic ability about you. She said, you could do this. You, you could, you could, this could be your job. You could do this. Wow. So that's kind of how I got into <laughs> <laughs> into that for 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 a while i mean that's you know people would call me and i'd give them psychic readings and you know <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> and i would have people call me back all the time saying you know what what you told me was exactly on the on the spot or whatever you know so i guess i was pretty good at it <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> Which, you know, that's, that's how we are anyway. I mean, I think sure. that, you know, I think that we are spiritual. I think that we are tuned into things. I think that we are, we, you know, we, we can feel things. So I've, I've always been, I've always been that person that could walk into a room and know what everybody was thinking, yeah. you know, I, you just sure. instinctively know. And, yeah. and, and I remember when I, uh, found out that I was adopted. I didn't find out till I was like 30 years old that I was adopted. But uh, when I did finally find out for sure, and when I uh, went to meet my biological family, uh, when I walked into the room and they're all sitting there, one of my first questions was, okay, who's the freaking psychic? <laughs> Which one of you is the freaking psychic? Because <laughs> that's, that's how I got this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so now, um, so you used to be a psychic. Does that mean you've lost the psychic ability or you just don't do readings anymore? Um, well, I can still do readings, uh, you know, but I, now I use it more in, in our area, we have a local unit that, uh, we go and investigate haunted houses. That's right. Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's how I use it now. Uh, how when fun. we go in and uh, do our investigations and everything and the rest of the group is off, you know, uh, doing their thing over here. And I'm usually over by myself over here, uh, talking with somebody <laughs> <laughs> someone that other people can see or yeah, <laughs> someone that yeah, the other yeah. people can't see <laughs> yeah and mo most mostly it's people that that can't see ah, yeah it is so very cool yeah i mean i i have a real deep history of uh spiritual um happenings uh around me uh my entire life so mm -hmm. you know i mean i was telling uh a friend of mine, well, one of my co uh, investigators the other day, and I said, you know, I said when I was a child, I said I, I, I don't talk about these things that often, but I said, you know, when I was a child, um, I had a spirit that would actually come in and and sit down on the edge of my bed and and talk to me as a child, mm -hmm. and uh, and he looked at me in disbelief, and I, <clears throat> that's why I don't talk about it very often. <laughs> <laughs> with too many people because you know people probably think i'm crazy it, and and i've had people say well that was your your childish imagination or whatever and i'm like no that uh, it wasn't yeah. my childish imagination no. it wasn't so because that that spirit told me things that i should not have known it, it told me i was a <sighs> it told me i was adopted it it oh, told yeah. me Wow. I, I remember one night specifically it came and sat on my bed and asked me where my mommy and daddy were. And I said, well, you know, it, 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 and, and it would wake me up in the early morning hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably, you right. know, that's the probably, magical time. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody in the house was asleep. Mm -hmm. And here I'm, I'm a four year old child being woken up by this spirit uh, in the middle of the night. It, and having a conversation with, yeah. um, and, and the, I remember one night specifically the spirit asked me where my mommy and daddy were. And I said, well, you know, as in my child voice, that's well, they're in their bed, you know, mommy and daddy are in their bedroom over there. They're sleeping, you know? And, and the spirit said, no, that's, that's not your mommy and daddy. Mm -hmm. Your mommy and daddy are out looking for you right now. And, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, 27 years later, I found out that I was adopted. Wow. So, and the story that my biological family told me is that, yes, they were out looking for me. They were trying to, to get me back at, at that pretty much at that exact time, really. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you know, so I guess, I guess the thing is, is that I was, my mom was 15 when I was born. So, uh, mm. you know, being up here in, in, uh, uh, Michigan in 1964, oh, you yeah. know, yeah, it wasn't a good thing. So, mm -hmm. um, I was pretty much born in a convent and, uh, um, taken by the nuns and put up for adoption right away. So, wow. you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you knew when, when you were told 
when you said you were 30 years old that you were adopted, it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a, a, a surprise. It was a shock, of sure. course, obviously. Right. Well, because a lot of things probably dawned on you at that moment. It, okay, it I'm adopted and that ghost <laughs> was real. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very true. It is very true. But you know what? You're right. I, I did have those ideas and I did have those naggings and I did have, you know, the the recollection of, of that spirit that uh, that told me many things over the course of several years of wow. waking me up in the middle of the night and sitting on the edge of my bed and talking to me in the, sure. in the wee hours of the morning, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. I remember um, we, when I was a kid, um, probably 10 year old, 10 years old and on um, there was a specific house that we lived in that was very active, very strange things occurred in that house to more than one person including me and um yeah just a t completely unexplained bizarreness <laughs> yeah and and what was very interesting was that more than one person would could see it at the time so sure you know yeah. it's like um lot, that stuff doesn't happen to me so much anymore but i think it's because i'm so busy my brain is kind of shut off to it but i think right. when, i think when we're open to it it's definitely there i don't know what it is science nature you know, the other side, the veil, whatever, you know, I don't think we need to know. I just think there is something beyond us. There's something more than this little body. <laughs> right. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there, there's so much more going on. I mean, you know, think about it. The, the universe is so immensely huge. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's just, we, we can't even fathom what's really out there. Mm -hmm. We really can't. We have, you know, and even all that we know scientifically now is just, I mean, it, you're change. just scratching the first layer of yeah. paint off of a, you know. Well, yeah. It, and if you think about how many things that they thought were, weren't scientific stuff, right, has been proven to be, like yeah. science has been able to prove that it exists. So, you know, right. like I think. It just hasn't been proven yet. Right. <laughs> you know, it's all science. It just hasn't been proven yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. That makes sense to me. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's there. You you know that there's a lot going on. I mean, you know, I I I just I believe that there's a lot of magic that mm -hmm. happens in the universe. And when I talk about magic, I, I think it's just things that we can't explain, we'll never be able to sure. explain. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and I, I still have to believe that there's there's magic in the world and there's magic in the universe. I, yeah. I have to believe that, you know. Oh, yeah. The universe is so much bigger. I mean, just even looking at pictures of how small we are compared to our galaxy and how small our galaxy is compared to, you know, like what, what we scientists can see. And right. It's just right. astounding. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're like, a, we're a pinpoint in this. Vast yeah. Ocean. Yeah. You know, it's very true. I mean, you know, <clears throat> the thing is, is we're looking at, at things through, through our lenses and, and our historical lenses are telling us, you know, the world works in this way, sure. uh, his, you know, uh, 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 physics work in a certain way, you know, and, and, and the physics, the, the laws of physics that we know are basically laws that we've actually written ourselves right. uh, as yeah. a way to try to understand <laughs> how it works. And, you know, when people are talking about, well, you know, this is the laws of physics. Well, that's really not the laws of physics at all. Yeah, that's what we've that's only what we've been able to put into words right? <laughs> and words right. are limiting, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> words, words just put it in a context. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so, and, and we put it in a, it, we did it that way so that we could understand it right. with our tiny little minds that we have at this point, you know, yeah. and you know, no matter how intelligent we think we are, we're just nowhere near, um, intelligent enough or, or, or open enough to be able to realize what's, you know, really going on, you know, yeah. or, or the half of it really, you yeah. know? 
Yeah. So <laughs> I think part of the magic is not having the answers completely. You know. <laughs> that is that absolutely is- right. That is absolutely right. Because you know the the thing is is you know that as an artist and and I you know I think that a lot of times it, it's just like magicians, right? Mm-hmm. A magician knows how the magic is done. You know what I mean? A magician knows how the trick is done. Um, when he does, when he or she does, when they do their trick, and we're at at the audience level, and we're saying, "Oh my God, how did you do that? That's that's just magical." You know yeah. how you did that? Well, they know how it was done. So to them, it's probably not as big of a deal sure. to them. You know what I mean? Just like a, a, as artists, a lot of times when we look at artwork that other people do, we can oh, yeah. appreciate the art, but at the same time, we know how it's done. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, we're not as mesmerized by it. And maybe I'm speaking more about myself here, but I know I'm not as mesmerized by other people's artwork because I know how it's done. Mm hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I love that they took the time to do what they did and I appreciate the subject matter. I appreciate what they did. Uh, but to be awestruck, I'm, I'm not, you know what I mean? Because yeah, okay. I'm, I'm doing the same thing, here, sure. right? yeah. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and, but, you know, but at the same time, there are times when you come across artists and artwork that you are absolutely awestruck mm-hmm. by because those artists are doing something on a different level. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're doing something so different um, that you were like, wow, you, you can't wrap your head around. You, how did they do that? How mm-hmm. are they doing that? Um, you know, so, so there is still that magic. You know, even in art, even in art done by others, you know, there, there is still that magic. And I, whenever I start feeling like, uh, whenever I start looking at other people's artwork and I'm like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I mean, I know how that's done. I can do that. You know, I paint that. I do that all the time. You know, then I, I, I had to, I have to kind of smack myself a little bit and say, you know what? That's not what it's about though. You yeah. have to still look at the magic. Mm-hmm. You have to still look for those artists out there that, that are doing more than what you're doing yourself. Yes. You, oh, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and they're tapping into another level than, than what you are tapping into. Mm-hmm. And, and you aspire to, to do uh, to figure out what they're doing and how they're doing it, you aspire to tap into um, that plug that they plugged into yeah. somehow, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and and I think that that's what I, 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 it bothers me a lot of times when I see artists that just start going through their lives and you can tell that they, you know, they're, they're not really excited by their own artwork and oh, they're not really yeah. excited by other people's artwork anymore. You know what yeah. I mean? They're just kind of going by the motions they put the paint to the canvas, they put the, you know, uh, pencil to the paper or whatever, the but they're effort, not really yeah. inspired. You the can eff- tell. The effortless artist. Yeah. 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 You can tell. You can you tell. Know, and and um, I'm coming from a writer's perspective. I mean, I've done art. I'm a, I've done painting. I'm, um, and I could, I could be better at it if I put my mind to it, but that's just not where my heart is. But, um, but as a writer, um, you know, I come, I, I feel like I come across that more than I come across people that are odd. Um, and a, a lot of times I'm, when I um, talk to some writers, they're not interested in other writers whatsoever. They're only interested in what they're doing. They're only interested in pushing their own work. And I'm yep. really trying to like in my, I, I run a Facebook group, which um, is how we know each other. <laughs> yeah, um, right. You know, I'm, I'm really having to, in the background, I'm having to put the brakes on some people because that's all they want to do is promote their own stuff. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> these are the promo days. Any other day, I would love to see you posting about someone else's stuff, you know, yeah. push someone else's stuff, look at someone else's blog, you know, talk about someone else's book. 
Um, because for me, I mean, that's what I do. I, um, I'm not in this just for me. I'm doing this podcast for other artists or for other writers, musicians, right. all that stuff. And, um, and that's pretty natural to me to, you know, I'm not on this journey alone. Obviously, I could not do this alone. So why would I ever consider only focusing on myself? And, right. um, and I can't make people think, I can't make artists, I can't make writers think about other artists and writers, but I can control what they're posting. <laughs> so, so, you know, that's, that's super important to me. When, and that draws me to other writers is when, um, you know, I'm more likely to buy another writer's book when they have boosted other writers, when they're only talking about themselves. No, I, I mean, that book could be amazing. I'm never going to know it because they talk, they're just so about themselves that, you know. You know, and, like, the, and that's exactly right. You know what? And visual artists are exactly the same way. Graphic artists are exactly mm -hmm. the same way, exactly the same way. And that's always one of my most it, hugest pet peeves is is artists it, it just as you so eloquently put it that are only talking about themselves and they're so focused on their own work but here's the thing is what i think is that artists visual artists anyway and and probably uh, uh, write writers and and probably music I, you know what i've talked mm -hmm. to musicians that have said the exact same things the the same and I think that what it is, number one, we're so passionate about our own work. And, and that's, you know, that's natural. We're, 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 our work is our children. You know what I mean? That, that, that's our child, you know, yeah. what we're working oh, yeah. on, our, our project. Um, and that's the thing that we love. And we can't, we can't see the beauty in other people's children be for, for, for seeing the beauty in, in our own. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, so I, I understand that, and, and that's part of it. Uh, another part, I think, is that artists, we, we, we use our art for different things. We use our art for self-expression, mm -hmm. of course. That's, that's the top thing. We use our art to enable ourselves to eat mm -hmm. we use our art as a way to communicate with people feelings that we want to communicate and we use our art for validation yes. <laughs> and the thing is is i think that all of these things come into play so much <clears throat> and and if we see somebody liking somebody else's art, immediately that tells us that that person who likes that other person's art likes them more than we than us. Yeah. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if they like them that person more than us because they're liking their art then that means they're going to give their money to that person <laughs> and, and not to me. Right. And then we start tapping into that brain that says, if I don't eat, I'm going to die. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. It's yeah. exactly right. So, you know, I, I think that, and we're only human in the oh, end. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. we're only human in the end. So, <laughs> I think that a lot of people, you know, and, and I, I threw myself in that same, in that same pile. I mean, oh, I did yeah. the same thing. Yeah. We all do, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so, it's our, you know, our ego is what drives us right? Yeah. and our ego is what keeps us alive too, though. So, right. um, you know, we can't live without our ego, right? but it's, sometimes it, it gets <laughs> a it little self-centered. <laughs> it does. It does. You know, and especially when you, especially when you've made the, the, the world's best widget in your mind sure. and you're trying to share it with other people, you know, and you're going to everybody else saying, Hey, look at my widget, look at my widget. Oh, gosh, and yes. nobody will look at your widget <laughs> <laughs> because they're making their own widgets. Right. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> my widget took four years to make. That's right. <laughs> look at you know, it. That's right. You don't know the sweat and tears I put into yeah. my widget. 
<laughs> you know, but they're a not put, looking at your widget because sweet. they're putting sweat and tears in their own widgets. Right. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh but my it gosh. Is, it is our higher selves, uh, those selves beyond this little body that can seep in and say, You're not the only one. Look. <laughs> right. <laughs> Reach out. Right. You know, and that's, <laughs> honor, honor and, others, higher selves. <laughs> and that is absolutely right. You know, and, and it's those times when you have to put down your widget. Yeah. And you had to go on social media. Yeah. And you had to go on sites like you're running. Okay. Yeah. And you had to go on those, uh, uh, those art, uh, art groups sure. on Facebook and go around and look at other people's widgets mm -hmm. and say nice things about their widgets too. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because when you go around and say nice things about their widgets, what's going to happen? They're going to come and start looking at your widgets, oh. you know? Yeah. So, and then maybe hopefully they'll say nice things about your widgets too. Yeah. And, and the people that are buying their widgets will buy your widgets. That's right. They will. <laughs> and they you will. will eat and you they will not starve. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. There's plenty of money to go around. There really is. Sure. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this has been fantastic, Daniel. I'm so glad we had a chance to chat and laugh. Me too. <laughs> Me too. And, this and has been sip great. Sip our bourbon in our it's, pajamas. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm in my pajamas. Yeah. I've got my. Yeah, we forgot to talk about our pajamas. What are your pajamas? My pajamas are a Game of Thrones shirt, <laughs> <Okay>. a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a sweater on because it's so cold, but nice. I have. A Nevermore set Ooh. of pajamas. I bought them specifically for this. That's I remember awesome. I got, I bought them because we were talking about having you on this show months ago. Right. And I was like, I don't own a real pair of pajamas. So, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm a yoga therapist. I've been teaching yoga for 20 years. My old yoga clothes become my pajamas. So I was like, nice. So when you mentioned, oh, we'll probably wear pajamas and sip on bourbon or wine. Right. And, and I was like, I got to get myself a pair of pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> so these actually just arrived a couple of weeks ago, even though I ordered them months ago. And I was like, what is this? And I opened them. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got never more pajamas on. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Too good. Too funny. Yep. So yeah. what, uh, what would you like people to be watching out for, for you? Well, you know what? Definitely watch out for ye gods. That's going to be coming. Um, that's, a, that's a graphic, uh, uh, a comic book, really, that's going to be coming. I'm going to be uh, starting the Indiegogo on that here soon. Um, I'm looking at, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to be starting it probably at the end of January, early February. Uh, even right now, I'm feverish, feverishly working on <laughs> the, the pages for it and everything, because oh, nice. what I like to do is I like to, before I, I start a crowdfunding project, I like to have the project basically done because sure. um, that way, once people have crowdfunded it, they're not waiting for months and months and yeah. months and months and months uh, for a project that sometimes, unfortunately, I've, I've backed projects before that never never came oh yeah 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 <laughs> you know so I, I i hate to give anybody the idea that that's going to happen so i like to have the project at least 80 percent done before i even start the crowdfunding part of it um that way when they when they've pledged their money um i can go ahead and start getting their packet ready to send out to them and everything right. when the crowdfunding is over and reached its goal um, so it's not my first crowdfunding project. So I, <laughs> I kind of, you know, I kind of have an idea of how, how to do it. Um, so look for ye gods. And of course, look for uh, Captain Wallace uh, uh, Artsy Adventures. Um, you know, the thing is, is just like I reminded my, and here's the thing. If anybody ever wants to volunteer 
we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So we're not just we're not just a nonprofit that just goes on on social media and says, "Hey, I'm a nonprofit organization. I can take donations." Well, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you're just saying if you're just saying you're a nonprofit organization, that really doesn't mean anything. Right. We're an actual 501c3 uh, charity nonprofit organization with the IRS. So we can take all donations. All donations are 100% tax deductible to the person who's doing person or company who's donating to us. Um, also, uh, we can we love to have volunteers help us out, and you can volunteer from the comfort of your home. Oh, nice. um, so a lot of our volunteers uh, are working remotely from the comfort of their home, and what we do things is they uh, facilitate. Um, venues for us to go and visit. Um, they get uh, other donation opportunities for us, or uh, they contact uh, publications, magazines, and things like that, try to get the word out for us, uh, about us. Um, also, we, you know, uh, up to this point, I've been doing all the artwork by myself, <laughs> but, you know, it's getting big enough where I, I can if people want to come in and start helping with artwork, um, we can, we can do that as well. Um, I would welcome that as well. So a lot of different, uh, uh, opportunities where people can, uh, come in and volunteer and help us out, uh, with oh, that wow. as well. So. <laughs> <That's> fantastic. <laughs> And uh, so I'll just do my little plug. So uh, my debut novel, The Everstein Chronicles. Oh, it's backwards. Um, awesome. The Everstein Chronicles has just recently come out. Um, it will be on, it's already on ebook. It'll be on Audible soon. Um, that's what people can watch out for me. And your website is www.dragonbrushart.com, right? Right. Yeah, it's all end. one word. Yeah. And, and then Captain Wallace is www.captainwallace.org. Right. Yeah. Yep. yep. And <laughs> yeah, that's what we got going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good stuff. It's all, all fun. Good. Yeah. And my bourbon's all gone. <laughs> you know what? So is mine. I'm like, I keep wanting to reach for my glass, and I'm like, don't reach for the glass. It's empty. <laughs> right. <laughs> We drank it all. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. So, I love it. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Well, this was thank fun. Thank you very much. Yeah, I had a great time. <laughs> good, good, good. I'll have you I, take it away. <laughs> oh, there we go. And here comes the old Cat Wallace here. Just reminding everybody that if you like what you saw, just go ahead and remember to like and subscribe. And always remember to head into an artsy adventure, mates. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daniel. This has been awesome. You're welcome. Thank you so yeah, much. We'll see you later. Take care. All you right. too. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>